Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Today, I'm going to share with you how to design simply supported rectangular beam doubly reinforced. Previously, I do already share with you how to design simply supported rectangular beam singly reinforced. So we know that the beam given here is rectangular beam because of the beam is not connected with the slab. So if the beam is not connected to the slab, therefore this beam is considered as rectangular beam. So here are the action that is acting on top of the beam. So there is a brick wall 2.5 kN per meter square at 3 meter height, finishes, services and also variable action. So all this load from the finisher services and variable action is actually on top of your slab. So I do already consider this load is already transferred from slab to the beam. So that's why the unit is already in kilonewton per meter in uniformly distributed load. So given here, the length is 5.25 meter. Here is the dimension size of the beam, which is 150 millimeter times 350 millimeter. So in my case here, I do already recap, I do already do calculate the preliminary sizing of the beam. Therefore, I get the size of 150 times 350 millimeter. So you may actually uh, do the preliminary sizing. So before you start the design, because as an engineer, we have to determine what is the suitable size of the beam that we are going to provide for the structure. So there is a two step that we have to do. The first one is based on the fire resistance given. And then the second one is based on the span over depth ratio. So based on these two, so you may get the preliminary sizing of your B and also your H. So given here the data that we are going to use in order for us to design this structure. So the nominal cover given here is 45 millimeter. Supposed to be you have to calculate the C nominal based on the three condition. So which is due to the fire resistance, due to the bond requirement and also due to the exposure class. In my case here, I do already calculate earlier and then I got the answer is 45 millimeter. So the concrete grade FCK is 25 steel grade is 500, diameter bar is 12 mm, diameter link 8 mm, then expo and exposure condition is XS1. So for the diameter bar, in my case here, I assume the preliminary, preliminary sizing is 12 millimeter. So you may assume uh, the diameter size 60 millimeter, 20 millimeter, and uh, any size that have that has in the uh, dimension table. So, but you have to follow the requirement when you would like to provide the size of the diameter bar in your design. So it's based on the AS required or the area of detention reinforcement required. So if, for example, the requirement is 16 millimeter size, so you have to provide 16 millimeter, although your preliminary sizing is 12 millimeter. So you have to really understand how to provide this reinforcement because most of the students have wrong assumption when they would like to provide the diameter of bar when they already determine the AS required. So because of this problem, they assume that when they assume the early size of the diameter bar is 16 millimeter, they have to follow uh, when they have to follow this size when they would like to provide the diameter the diameter bar after they get the as required so it is wrong so you have to follow the minimum requirement based on the as required so don't be over designed or over provided of the reinforcement so second one we have to calculate the design action the design action is n equal to 1.35 gk plus 1.5 uk gk is actually the permanent action qk is actually the variable action so on the permanent action here, we have a sulfate of beam, brick wall, finishes and services. So sulfate of beam is equal to 25 times 0 0.15 times 0 0.35 equal to 1.313 kN per meter. Brick wall is equal to 2.5 times 3 meter. You get 7.5 kN per meter and then the finishes and also services. So you get the total permanent action here, 9.213 and then the variable action is 3 kN per meter. It's based on the... Uh, type of the building that you are going to design, refer to Euro code 1 as I do already explain to you before. So then I got the design action here is 16.94 kN meter. 
this process, you have to analyze the beam in order for you to provide the shear force diagram and also bending moment diagram in order for you to know the VED or V maximum or shear force maximum and also maximum bending moment of this beam. So how to calculate this? So in my case here, okay, I do already have the uniformly distributed on top of the uh, beam, which is the factor load is 16.9 for kilonewton per meter because this is a simply supported beam. So I'm using this formula, the maximum shear force is equal to WL over 2. I got the maximum here 44.47 kilonewton. So uh, in this case here, Okay, so in order for me to calculate the bending moment, so I'm using this formula M maximum is equal to WL squared over 8. So I've got 58.36 kilonewton meter. So there is another way in order for you to get this 58.36 because this maximum shear, this maximum bending moment is actually equal to the area of this shear force. So this shear force is triangular. So because this is symmetrical, so it's equal to 0 0.5 times 44.47 times with 5.25 divided by 2, you will get the same answer, 58.36 uh, for the maximum moment. So what is the next process that we have to go through? So the next process is start on the design main reinforcement. So as usual, okay? So to design the main reinforcement, the first step, we have to calculate the effective depth, which is D is equal to H minus C nominal, which is nominal cover, minus diameter link, minus diameter bar over 2. In my case here, I got the answer is 291. Okay, so next, because it is a rectangular section, so that's why I'm using this formula K is equal to M over FCKBD square is equal to 58.36 times 10 power of 6 over 25 times 150 times 291 power of 2, you will get 0 0.183 and more than 0 0.167 k valent. Therefore, the compression reinforcement is required doubly reinforced. Okay, so you will get the maximum moment is from here. Okay, so next process, you have to calculate your Z. Z is equal to D times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 minus K over 1.134 power of 1 over 2 and equal to 0 0.80 D. So it is less than 0 0.95 D. Therefore, you use 0 0.80 D as your Z. So if you get the answer, your Z is more than 0 0.95 D, you have to use 0 0.95 D as your Z value. Next process, if you would like to, because this is a doubly reinforced, so you have to check the D prime over X. So D prime is equal to C nominal plus diameter link plus diameter bar over 2. Okay. Or you can calculate H minus H minus D prime. So uh, over with X, X is equal to D minus 0 0.82 D over 0 0.4 so i've got this answer 0 0.41 which is more than 0 0.38 that's why i'm using this formula so if you get less than 0 0.3 you have to use another formula that is shows in your design appendix or your euro code so in my case here so we have to calculate the first one the first one is as prime because it is a doubly reinforced we have to design both at the bottom reinforcement and also top reinforcement. The top reinforcement we call as a compression reinforcement. Bottom reinforcement we call as a tension reinforcement. So in this case, because it is doubly reinforced, we have to calculate or design the compression reinforcement first. So this is the formula K minus K balance times FCK BD squared over 0 0.87 FYK D minus D prime. Then I got the answer 50.35 millimeter square. So I provide the reinforcement here to H12 to 26 millimeter squared by referring the dimension table in your design appendix. Next process, after you calculate the compression reinforcement, you have to calculate the tension reinforcement. So here is the formula for the tension reinforcement. AS is equal to K balance FCKBD squared over 0 0.87 FYK Z balance plus AS prime time FSC over 0 0.87 FYK. So it will reflect this formula why we have to calculate d prime over x so you have to know this condition okay so z balance here is 0 0.95 d okay so you have to be careful here then fsc is equal to 700 minus uh, times 1 minus d prime over x so i've got the answer here so this as prime that you have to 
this AS prime that you have to use is actually the AS prime that you get here, which is the AS prime provided, not the required. Okay, so not AS prime required, not provided. So I hope that you did not confuse on that. So again, I repeat, the AS prime here that you have to use is AS prime required not provided okay so i hope that you clear um, on this so you get the answer here and then you provide as usual by referring the dimension table so as usual we have to calculate the as minimum and the as maximum so we will get the answer here and then you have to make sure that the as provided that you provide for both as prime and also as it should be less than uh, as maximum and as minimum is less than your as provided then the design is okay Okay. What we have to do next, we next process is we have to design the shear reinforcement. So we have to provide the shearing of the beam in order for us to type up the main reinforcement. So that is the purpose of the shear reinforcement. So other than that, the shear reinforcement is functioning to uh, prevent a shear failure of the beam. So we get here VED is equal to V max is from your shear force diagram. Then you have to calculate your VRDC. So you have to make sure that your K value here, 1 plus 200 over the square root should be less than 2 meter. If you, it, 2 millimeter. So if you get more than 2 millimeter, you have to use 2 millimeter as your K. And then your row 1 EAS provided over BWD. So, and this value should be less than 0 0.02. If you get more than 0 0.02, you have to use 0 0.02 as your row 1. Okay. So, the answer here is 31.63 kN. Then you have to calculate V minimum. So, the minimum shear, so which is 19.91. You compare these two values in order for you to compare with your VED. So, in my case here, VRDC is bigger than your V means that why I'm comparing the VED with VRDC where VED is more than VRDC. Shear reinforcement is not required. Therefore, provide minimum shearing. Although, in this conclusion, Shear sure reinforcement is not required, but we still need to provide the minimum shear sure reinforcement because we it is compulsory for us to provide shear sure reinforcement in the beam in order for us to tie up the main reinforcement. That's why you have to understand. Does not mean we we get the answer shear sure reinforcement is not required. No need for us to not providing the shear sure reinforcement. So you have to understand. Okay. So by using this formula for minimum shearing, so 0.08 BW square root FCK over FYK, I got the ratio is 0 0.120. And then you refer your dimension table. So you provide H8 300 center to center 0 0.335. Next process is a deflection check. So on the deflection check, as usual, we have to calculate the L over the basic, L over the allowable, and L over the uh, actual. Then we have to compare the value here. So L over the basic is equal to K times 11 plus 1.5 square root of FCK times rho naught over rho minus rho prime plus 1 over 12 square root FCK times rho prime over rho square root. Okay, so why I'm using this formula? Because I do already calculate rho and also rho naught, which is uh, the answer is rho naught less than rho. That's why I'm using equation 7.16b. So... In my case here, okay, so we have a doubly reinforced that why the row prime we have a value here is equal to as required prime over BWD. So my answer L over the basic is 20.56. Next process is L over the allowable is equal to L over the basics time with modification factor of the reinforcement time with modification factor of the span. So equal to 26.42. So modification factor of the reinforcement is equal to 6 to 8. 6 to 8 is actually AS uh, provided over AS required. So you will get this answer. Okay. Then you have to calculate L over the actual. So L over the actual is equal to L over D, which is 5 to 5, 0 over D is 291. So you get the answer is 18.04. Therefore, the L over the actual is less than L over the allowable. Therefore, the deflection check is... Pass. Furthermore, 
we have to calculate the cracking check. So cracking check in order for us to check the spacing between the reinforcement that we provide uh, in the beam. So as usual, the first one we have to calculate the steel stress. So the steel stress using this formula in a section 7.3, FYK times GK plus 0.3 QK over 1.15 times 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK. So the answer here, okay, so it's equal to 260 Newton per millimeter square. I'm using WK is equal to 0 0.3. So by interpolation, I got the allowable spacing of the reinforcement is 175 millimeter. So the actual one, because I'm providing the reinforcement uh, for this beam is refer back to the reinforcement here, uh, which is 2H20. I will have only one spacing. Therefore, I arrange one reinforcement at the left, one reinforcement at the right. So that's why I'm only using this formula, which is equal to V minus 2 C nominal minus 2 diameter link minus 2 diameter bar divided by one spacing. I got the S actual is 4 millimeter. So in my case, yes, S minimum is more than S actual uh, and less than S allowable. So in my case here, the spec check is failed due to the, the actual spacing here is less than the minimum, okay? So what we have to do in order for us to make sure that the structure that we design here is passed is if we have to reduce the diameter of bar or numbers of bar. So for example, okay, uh, by reducing the diameter of bar, for example, from uh, 20, to 16, but we have to increase the numbers of bar, then possible uh, for you to have uh, the spacing much more bigger. So, but if it still fail, so what you have to do is you have to increase the dimension of the beam with a BW in order to increase the spacing of the bar because uh, in order for you to calculate the S actual is reflect to your BBW. So, uh, from 150, maybe you can increase into 175. Then you will get the answer is passed. Then you have to draw the detailing as usual. So the detailing that you have to draw is based on the longitudinal section and also cross section. So here is the look of the de uh, detailing of the reinforcement for the rectangular beam doubly reinforced. So I hope that by my explanation and this example, you understand the overall process of designing a rectangular beam doubly reinforced. So if you have any question, you may come and see me and ask me in the comment and also WhatsApp me through my WhatsApp number. That's it for today. Thank you.